Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Popal from Gaming here and today I'm playing some more Bloons Adventure Time Tower Defense. So today, as you can see, we are on sinking, we're gonna be doing impoppable. We're doing another one tower only and ultra well not one tower only. Another ultra buffed tower uh, redo, this time with Marcelin. Uh, so this is the build we have. I will quickly go over everything. We have Devil Monster Bass. I'm not gonna go through the stats, you can just pause or take a look. Uh, Carl the gem because it actually works for her unlike everyone else apparently if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, Go see my uh, myth busting sort of video put a link in the description a lot of that themes and stuff are gonna come up today uh, Hambo which is nice and special for Marcelin uh, Baker shard heart gauntlets. I believe yes uh, Engineers blueprint for the extra damage to Moabs demon heart just for sheer damage and cosmic gauntlets because I'm not quite sure what else I meant to put here um, as far as buffs go, they're pretty basic. We once again have just basic Tuxedo Jake. Uh, we have normal Jake because there are more instruments. And unfortunately, we don't have most of them this time, but we also have PB with, uh, not Carl the Gem, with, uh, Gem of the Gemstone. Always weird the Gem of the Gemstone is the necklace and Carl the Gem is the gem, even though I think that makes sense. It always messes with me for some reason. Uh, as well as that, we have, what was I going to say? Um, right. We have a Cobra, because Cobra's going to help. He's a super monkey. Um, I'm not bothering with the, what are they called? The, um, water nips this time we worked. Uh, we tried to do them last time with Finn, but it didn't really work because this map isn't that big. I will once again be, obviously, using the, uh, Lady Unicorn messing around tricks. Uh, so we can actually place our towers literally anywhere, so that's always great. Uh, but yeah, let's just get started. So this should be pretty fun. Marcelin's an interesting one. She has the potential to be a really powerful tower, but she almost never is. For the simple fact that she targets multiple lanes, or she targets like single targets, she's a flying character that doesn't shoot projectiles. So as you can see, she's like floating back and forth, which is fine when balloons are slow and she moves fast. But once balloons are like pink balloons, and she doesn't get much faster than this, there's a lot of issues going on, so it doesn't end up going all that well. Um, but she definitely has the potential to do a lot of damage, which is really good. It just obviously it's very difficult for her to do a decent job because a lot of the time she struggles to catch up with the balloons. Uh, however, after this like tiny split at the start here, uh, it does become about that. Uh, it does become a single target map or a single lane map rather, which should make her look a lot better, and obviously it's a lot of single target that's very close to each other, which is very good for single lane. I don't know why I keep saying single target instead of single lane. I guess they just sound similar to me. Uh, do we only have two Cobras? That kind of sucks. Okay. Well, in for Tuxedo Jake then. I'll do a similar thing as we did with Finn. I'm just gonna gather a ton of money for the start here, and after we have, like, I don't know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, I'll set up all the Ultra Buffs, and Marcelin will be incredible! And this time, hey, um... Tuxedo Jake's, like, upgrade the boost character levels of musician instruments, it's actually gonna be really helpful, so that's kind of cool. I mean, it won't be that helpful, it's not that big of a deal, but her, like, weird music box, jukebox thing making damage vibrations, that sounded so strange. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Uh, it'll actually be useful and count towards the damage number we want to be going up, so that's, that's pretty darn great. Because I always do that by accident, since I use Marceline for buffs, because she's a music instrument, I'm like, oh, Marceline can't attack, I'll just move her into the corner. But then, of course, her actual, like, base thing, the thing you place that is, like, her character icon, almost, this thing, um, it, once reaching, like, once Marceline's level 10, it'll release, like, a wave attack that does damage. Uh, and unfortunately, Tuxedo Jake has this upgrade for Locrista, which increases the level of all nearby music instrument characters, or music weapon characters by three. Also, you saw already there how bad that can be. It's a bit of a struggle. Marcelin, you actually need some upgrades, because otherwise you're going to struggle. The flight speed upgrade, very key for Marcelin, uh, as you can sort of just see. Uh, that was actually scarily close. I was not expecting that. I was hoping we'd do a little bit better than that, but it uh, looks like even that was a little too much to ask for. Marcelin is going to struggle until she gets all of her buffs. Once you get all four buffs, we'll probably be okay, but until then, definitely gonna be some struggling happen. Or some struggles happen. Happening. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but no, once we get all four buffs, I feel like she will be really strong. I'm hopeful she can make it to the bad balloon, but I don't know. In my mind, I feel like she has more damage than Finn, but then I'm also thinking about it and 
No, there's no way she has more damage than Finn, so I have no idea. She might do really well, she might do really meh. I'm really not all that sure as to which it's going to be. Uh, what we can now do, though, is start off with the Lady Rainicorn Chain. So you may look at this and be like, wait a sec, how on earth are you able to place them on the water? Uh, it's called Lady Rainicorn doesn't, or anything on Lady Rainicorn, doesn't care how much it's on Lady Rainicorn, as long as it touches Lady Rainicorn at all. Yeah, so, you know how I had to place her directly on the, like, the stone or whatever? Now, now I really don't. Also, Flame puts his camera detection time, because I messed this up again. I did this with Finn, too. I'm like, wait a sec, right, no camera detection. Uh, Flame Prince has come to the rescue, keep us alive for the time being. I'm almost ready to set up the buffs. I do still have a few more Lady Rainicorns to go. And then, of course, I can sell the base one, because of course I can, because... Yeah, I don't really know what else to say there, it's just... You can sell it, because, of course you can. Uh, we'll just sell this last one. Four should be good. I can get two more if necessary, but four should be good for the time being. Uh, and there we go, our Lady Rainicorn Arena has been set up. I believe we have $17,000 right now. That's not a ton. I'd rather wait a few more rounds, because uh, stuff can be quite expensive. Uh, so I think I'm going to save for like $30,000, and then I'll like, turn off Artist. I'll turn off Artist right now, actually. But I'll wait a few more rounds before we actually... Uh, sell Tuxedo Jake and set up the actual defense and buffs and stuff. Um, because I want to make some more money, and once I sell Tuxedo Jake, I'll probably make a lot less money. Um, so I want to wait for all the money to come in, and probably at the end of this round we will sell everything and upgrade and buff Marceline. Because uh, hopefully Marceline will do a really good job. It's a little hard to- okay, one more round. That was really short. All of these rounds are really short, but still, one more round. Um, but no, Marceline, she has a lot of potential, I feel, to do a lot of damage. I really am kind of curious to see what's going to happen when we do, like, go all the way and fully ultra buff her. So, uh, yeah, let's find out now. Uh, Marceline, you're going to go in the middle pretty much as always, uh, on Pursuit. That's not the button I meant to press. Pursuit. Uh, then, next pretty important one is to clear Jake, who's going to have to give you all of his buffs, because they're pretty darn important, and also give him money making, that's not what I meant to do, uh, because money making is still awesome. Um, at this point, I need to go for Jake, because Jake's pretty important just to be in range of you there. Uh, PB's also pretty important to be in range of you, to be in range of you rather. Uh, PB going to go right there, and then we'll also get to me in case I want it. Uh, then we need to do Lemon Hope, lots of buffs here. Uh, quite a few actually need to upgrade Lemon Hope first. I did actually confirm as well in the video that Lemon Hope does not stack, which kind of sucks, uh, but it's just unfortunately a fact we're gonna have to deal with. Uh, Lemon Hope doesn't stack, which is really too bad, but something that just had to be, I suppose. It would have been pretty overpowered if it did stack, I suppose, but even still, it kind of sucks. Uh, at this point, let's fully upgrade Marceline, because why not? I'm not gonna go for Necromancy, I'm gonna go for Shape Shifting, because I think that's more fun. Uh, we've got to upgrade our Cobra, and then I don't think there's anything else. This feels empty, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure this is literally every single buff, which is very weird, but it's weird to say that, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, as you can see, Marceline is stealing the lives of every last red balloon, and of course she does damage. So balloons would become red balloons, and then she steals their souls, because she's a vampire. Uh, honestly, a little weird, but what are you going to do? Okay, right, auto start. I'm like, wait, what happened? Why is it stopped? Also, I never realized Marceline actually holds her instrument once you buy one of her upgrades. I did not know that. Uh, like, that's the devil monster bat. Has she always done that? Or, like, even as a base tower, did she do that? I'm almost positive she did not show it. Maybe it's, like, once she reaches level 10 or something. I don't know, but I do not remember that in the slightest. Uh, and just like with the flame elemental stuff with FP, as you will see, we have ourselves the bat. It's pretty powerful. It's pretty cool. It doesn't last very long, apparently. I think it cancels out at the end of the round. Uh, but there we go. The bat. It's pretty cool. It's pretty epic. It's pretty powerful. And I believe it can also steal souls. Maybe. I'm not positive. I'm pretty sure it can, but I don't really know. Uh, but the cooldown obviously comes back pretty fast with all of the buffs we have. Uh, which is pretty great. Turn- or the- what's it called? Uh, what is her upgrade called? It is... 
Eating Red actually does work on BFBs as well, so it is a half-decent upgrade. It's not incredible, but it's decent. And as you can see, Marceline is level 10. Haha, I finally got my first level 10 character, except... No, only sort of. Unfortunately, you can't go past level 10 with that upgrade. That would be kind of cool if it was like, oh, using Tuxedo Jake, you will reach level 13 and receive plus 10,000 space damage or something stupid like that. Unfortunately, not a thing for probably obvious reasons. Still, it's a cool upgrade. It doesn't get used all that much by Tuxedo Jake because generally the music characters aren't that good. Marceline and Jake are very weak and their level 10 upgrades aren't that awesome, but hey, this is one of the very few situations where it makes a pretty big difference, and that means I can pseudo-simulate a level 10 character ultra buff, which is awesome. I'd still probably redo this for the extra, like, two or three trinkets, but I mean, hey, it's something. Also, the star bonuses, like, a lot of the weapons in particular uh, will give higher stats depending on the level of the character, which I always found a little odd that weapons did that and trinkets didn't, but whatever. Pfft, I don't know. I know originally, I kind of wish it was back in these days, originally with this game, uh, the character level decided the like strength of upgrades as well. So an upgrade would give like 5% attack speed plus 1% attack speed per character level, which was kind of crazy to me. Or even like Brofist made more money depending on what level your fin was. I found that so weird, but of course they got rid of that eventually for more like standardized level buffs. Which is fair. I still think this is a really cool concept for a game. Like, turning a BT6 type game into more of like an RPG type format, so you have levels, different characters, trinkets, weapons, and you have like different builds for the characters. It's very interesting, I really like this game, obviously. I still really hope that they do something else with this concept, because this is such an awesome game idea. Everything about it. Obviously Adventure Time is pretty key to this game being good, um, but just the basic trinket and weapon concept I think is so fun. And I really hope that, like, the Ninja Kiwi devs do something with it again, because it's so awesome. I really do love it. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure this game, unfortunately, didn't have the best success. Uh, it didn't do all that great, at least compared to, like, BP6 and stuff, but I don't know. I feel like this game had a de has a decent enough audience. For how long it's been since it's got an update, the fact that it still has this big of an audience, I think, says something. That people like this concept. Uh, like all of you guys watching, obviously. This is a cool game, cool game concept. And we get to do crazy stuff like this because, you know what's way more fun to ultra buff something? When you have a thousand different buffs to give them. It makes everything far, far more interesting. Also, this has been very boring because Marshallin has barely left the corners of the screen and it's already round 60. Uh, so as you can see, Marshallin, Finn, yeah, Marshallin might be a little bit stronger than Finn. It's just, just a smidge. Uh, this is honestly pretty awesome to see though. Because I, I feel like it's been a long time since I've seen Marceline be this powerful, which is really awesome to see. Honestly, though, now that I see his UMG, I realize, wait a sec, maybe she's not as powerful as I thought. Maybe, just maybe, she's a little bit weaker. Uh, but who knows? Maybe we're all set. Maybe we'll be okay for the bad balloon. Maybe. Probably not. Um, we're gonna find out, I guess. Okay, I mean, I feel like Marceline will probably be good, though. That was a little iffy on the Zoom G, I'm a little more nervous now, but we should be okay. I'm honestly a little nervous for DTs too. You saw how bad she did against pink balloons in the early game. Although I suppose we do have uh, Marceline's music box thing. I don't really know what it is. So I'm gonna call it a music box thing for the rest of this video. Please let me know what is it, what kind of music producing object is it. I'm probably just being dumb and blanking on the name, but I still appreciate it. <laughs> Um, but no, so we do have this to, as backup as well as, like, PP and Jake and stuff, so. We're not in a horrible situation, but we're definitely not like, oh, we'll be fine. Uh, DT's coming any round now in the next four rounds, four rounds, oh, round 69 is when the first DT's strike with vengeance. I always find it a little odd that ZMG's are classified as stronger than, or sorry, ZMG's. Uh, the DET's are classified, like, they spawn later than ZMG's, because they're generally considered to be harder. Yet anything to do with, like, different difficulties of balloons or targets the strongest balloon, ZMG's always first. It's probably based on, like, health or something, but oftentimes even BFBs will be like, oh, DDT, BFB? Yeah, I'm gonna one-shot the BFB. No. One-shot the DDT, that's so stupid, but it's probably based on, like, health or children class or whatever. Um, but even still, I find it really annoying whenever they do that. They're like, okay, 
want a disbursement. I need you to destroy the DT. The ZMDs have one health and are permastalled. Deal with the DTs. No, of course not. Okay, that's a weird ledge. Every once in a while, Marceline just like sits in the corner. Uh, doing nothing, attacking thin air because she's filled with vengeance. Also, DDT's, yeah, no, that was not a big issue in the slightest. Uh, so now, really, we only have the bad moon to worry about, probably, since I believe we've already fought multiple ZMGs now. So I guess it was just a bad fluke with round 60 that just didn't go well. Uh, so it looks like we'll probably be all set, uh, at least up until the bad moon, but we have such a long track, I feel like we're bound to be fine. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty confident now. I'm definitely feeling more confident than I was. So hopefully everything will be a-okay and we'll be all good. Also, I feel like the ZMG is taking damage just like over time, which is kind of weird. Uh, Marcelin doesn't have a DOT, at least not one that I'm aware of. Her damage is, as you can see, it goes up fairly quickly. But I swear the ZMG was like taking damage over time. I guess the telekinesis maybe. Like telekinesis, obviously she can't knock back the ZMG. But she probably does still take damage on, like, pyrokinesis and stuff. I'm sure that DOT still applies. Yeah, that's where the ZMG, like, went down to damage layer when most of them was nowhere near it, and I'm like, what the heck just happened? Uh, but no, so damage is really good. I don't know what happened with that first ZMG. I guess, to be fair, uh, Marcelin is technically a melee attacker, so she does have the area attack within her pierce, which is pretty high. So, she would be able to pop multiple balloons at once. Also, fortify DTs. Those are scary. Those made it, like, way farther than I expected, but I guess that makes sense. Double the health, the same amount of speed, but... Wow, that was not good. Uh, note to self, fortify DTs. Really, really dangerous. Uh, I am definitely gonna say this, there's no way we could beat this on a... On a map with fortified, like, DTs, UMGs, bad balloons. We die so quickly. Maybe one day I'll try the ultra buffs again on, like, difficult maps. Or even, like, the hardest map in the game, but that wouldn't really work. Hardest map in the game is always a fun one to do challenges on, because there's so many, like, it's just, it's a difficult thing, so no matter what you do, it's going to be a challenge and fun. Um, but obviously it also means the trade-off is you lose, like, 90% of the time. Also, Bad Balloon, where are you? I don't see anything. There we go, the Bad Balloon is here, Marceline, do your job. Do your job, awesome. Marceline, DPS-wise, uh, it's pretty good, it's about 1,000 DPS, about 1,000 damage per second. Uh, nothing incredible, though, so you know what? Let's give a bit of an attack speed boost. There's a tiny bit of Goo Goo Mama meter range here, which will help a bit. Uh, she's definitely popping it. Like, it's already almost on its final damage phase. We're 100% going to beat it. It's just a question of how much will we demolish the bad balloon. I don't think by that much. Activate, uh, what's it called? Um, Tixio Jake's, like, rock out ability to give it an attack speed boost. A tiny one. Warning Horn, come on, defeat the ZMG. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, that was pretty easy. That was still pretty close, though. We made it farther than the fortified DTs. So it's certainly not easy, but that obviously wasn't a difficult stage by any means. Honestly, a lot of fun. I'm glad, like, redoing these ultra buffs is a lot of fun, because we just get to see the true potential of all of these characters. It makes me, like, I don't know, appreciate them more, I guess. Uh, so it is very nice whenever that stuff works out. And we get a cool, powerful ultra buff character that otherwise, without the buffs, would be pretty bad. That's always a pretty cool experience. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching. If you're still here at the end, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, you're in like the 1% and it's really awesome. Or 10% or whatever. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Consider giving the video a like if you haven't yet. Subscribing to join the Football Fit Squad. We're really close to 3,000 subscribers. Channel anniversary is less than 10 days away. It would be really awesome if we could reach that in time. Um, yeah, that would be great. 3,000 subs for the channel anniversary. That would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, just have a wonderful day. And uh, I think I'll see you all tomorrow. So yeah, bye!